my dear children, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. We have enough to eat at home, maybe. A beautiful house, good bed, and it's already cold. People cover themselves very well to protect them from the cold. Sometimes, in spite of all these facilities, we are not happy. One of the reasons for the lack of happiness, I think, is the quarrels and fights and misunderstanding in the family. As we prepare ourselves for the great celebration of the Feast of Christmas, the Lord wants us to experience true happiness. That means there must be a total transformation. In the first reading that we listen to from the prophet Isaiah, 11th chapter, speaks about the messianic times. Immediately, maybe he spoke about the son of Akash, Hezekiah. How his reign will make people happy. He will judge rightly. He will be filled with the spirit of the Lord. But then, it is very much applicable to the true Messiah, that is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are told how during the messianic times there will be peace. Already Messiah has come as he come to your family. As he come into your heart. That is the question that the Lord is asking us today. During the messianic times see the atmosphere of peace that is described in today's first reading. It is told to us that the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The first sentence, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Normally, the wolf will be interested in eating the lamb, isn't it? But they will live peacefully, it seems. And then the cock, the leopard, shall, shall lie down with the with the kid. So even the leopard will lie down. And the calf and the lion and the and the family together. Half of the line will be together. It goes on to describe, and then a child will put his hand in the snake's den. In other words, this passage is to describe the atmosphere of peace that will prevail. And then finally it says, no one will think of doing evil to another. And all the people will be filled with the knowledge of God. This is the meaning of Christmas. Not intending evil for another. Living in peace. Living in peace. And being filled with the knowledge of God. That's why I repeat that we tell people, listen to the word of God. Read the Bible, reflect on it, when you are filled with the knowledge of God, you will not think of evil to anybody. Evil to anybody. The Messianic times, what is the 
situation in our own families, in the societies. Early in the last century, we heard about First World War, Second World War. Now, the wars have not ended. People of different communities fighting, languages fighting, different nations fighting, People constantly living in fear, all because they are not filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the knowledge of God, all because of the selfishness of people. You will tend to be more generous when you accept the Lord Jesus in your life. We come to the second reading of today. Here, St. Paul says, that may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, living in harmony. Again, the message of peace, the theme of peace is repeated by his Paul. Is there peace in the family or are you in pieces, each one? He yeah, had different peace to himself or herself. Really, we need to be really tolerant of one another. More than that, that is negative. But appreciating one another, being concerned with one another. St. Paul says, after writing the whole epistle towards the end, this comes from the 15th chapter. I used to always, Paul speaks about the love of God for us. In the first chapter, you are the beloved of God. In the fifth chapter, God's love is poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit that is given to us. And again in the eighth chapter, St. Paul says, who can separate us from the love of Christ? After saying all this, St. Paul says in the letter to the Romans, uh, right from the twelfth chapter onwards, what is the uh, response of the people who have realized the love of God? The first response is living in harmony. You see the mixture of, rare mixture of the twelve disciples. If Matthew the tax collector had been seen by Simon the seller, he would have killed him. Yes. Because Matthew was serving the Roman Empire, collecting taxes, farther money, their name, and Simon the Seller wanted to put away all the people who are supporters of Rome. So two different kinds of disciples, but they could live together because Jesus united them. You may be of different interests, but then the family must be united. There is no meaning in the forthcoming celebration of Christmas if you are not united, if you are not forgiven from your heart, your brothers and sisters. There may be some people who are not in talking terms even with their parents or parents with the children, brothers and sisters, in-laws. The Lord says, Live in harmony to St. Paul. Live in harmony in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Then St. Paul says, think of Jesus Christ who became a servant to the circumcised, servant to the Jews. Jews. This is the word St. Paul uses in today's letter. Jesus is a slave. If you want to celebrate the feast of Christmas, be a slave like Jesus. Like Jesus. Sometimes we go to visit some families. There are some people who sit and enjoy. Watch TV or mentally with the mobile all the time. Not at all concerned about the other members of the family. Cooking, cleaning, washing. These are not reserved only for the mother who has to do all the work. Each one should participate in all these works. Otherwise, your Christmas is meaningless. 
You are accepting Jesus as the Messiah is meaningless. An elderly mother-in-law is there, grandma is there, you can't do much. Can't you cut the vegetables and then help with the uh, for the cooking? You can do something about it. Some of them think that they got the monopoly of taking rest, watching TV, enjoying, sleeping, talking in the mobile. Only a few in the family are left for other things. I have seen in quite a number of families, the men being very much concerned about the work that the wife is doing in the kitchen, helping them, surely. Hands off to them. It is not reserved to one member of the family. Cooking is only for her, or cleaning is only for her. Collaborate in every way. This is what? So Paul calls Jesus as a slave. Jesus became a slave, became a servant, servant to the circumcised. Think of him and behave accordingly, the Lord says. Who are the best people? Yesterday I was preaching in Basilica. Jesus had compassion. We should feel like Jesus. We should think like Jesus. We should act like Jesus. He saw the people really in problem. So the gospel says, yesterday's gospel, says he had compassion on them. They were like sheep, like without a shepherd. He asked the disciples to pray for them that they may have enough laborers. And then he sends out the disciples. You saw me healing. You saw me casting out demons. Now you go and do that. You got everything freely. Give freely. And your brothers and sisters are alive. Our energy, our vitality, our money, our vehicles. All that we have, we have received freely from the abundance of God. We have to give them to others. In a little way, in your own way, you can do something. Never make anyone unhappy in your family. I often repeat to the students, when the class is boring, a teacher comes, the students will say, when at all this class will be over like that. When an inter interesting class, when his subject will be taught, like that they will think. So I tell the students, some people make us happy when they come to the class. Some others make us happy when they go from the class. My God, this subject is over, this hour is over like that. Same thing in your families also. When some people are away from home, some are very happy. When they return, they are very sad. Are your family members happy when you are away or happy when you are inside? You have to ask yourself, become a slave, feel like Jesus, have a compassionate heart, show solidarity with them. Don't be a spectator within the family. Oh, this is what is happening. Don't wait to do something. Everyone should do it. Should do something for the overall health of the family. Comfort of the family. The Lord is telling you. Live in harmony. Be a slave. Very beautiful. We come to today's gospel passage. One of the important personalities of the Advent season. Why even during the Christmas season is John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Today's gospel describes about his person and message. He was wearing camel skin in sense. He was eating locusts and oil honey. Very, very modified life, simple life. You will be peaceful if you are simple and austere like John Baptist. Don't think 
that you are elegant just brings you joy to you. True greatness is in belonging to the Lord, is in doing the will of God. We must be transformed by this person. Transformed, changed. Children who didn't study well so far must apply themselves seriously to study. Parents who didn't care for the children must show more attention to the children. People who are not so generous must become generous. Look at John the Baptist under his message. I have come to prepare the way of the Lord. I am only a voice in the desert. Voice in the desert. What is this voice saying? Repent. Be converted. This is the message. Repent. Already the axe is laid at the road. Think of your end. Be prepared as I said last week. Be prepared to face the Lord of judgment. Every day is a day of grace. Lead a fruitful life, meaningful life, a life of peace, a life of authenticity, a life of responsibility. Javadab is saying. So his message is so frightening. The Lord is coming to judge. Good grain, he will gather in the barn. But all those which are not good, he will burn them all. So think of your aim. Come on, prepare yourself. Awake. Get ready to welcome the Messiah. And then another thing, towards the end of today's gospel passage, he says, I am not the Messiah. Some of you are thinking, I am the Messiah. I am unworthy to carry his sandals. Another gospel says, to untie the lace of his shoes. Humility, humility, humility. Jesus was described as slave in today's gospel. John Baptist shows his humility to us as a lesson. Most of the time quarrels are because of lack of humility. Then Paul says, what is it you have, you have not received? If you have the thing you have is what you have received, why do you boast? Don't boast about your love, your riches, all that you possess. Everything is temporary. Your greatness lies in how much you belong to the Lord, you seek the will of God and help others and serve others. If we want to reach the grave of Christmas, we ought to pass through the other Baptist. If we want to enjoy the joy and peace of Christmas, we need to be transformed by the man and message of John the Baptist. In short, my dear brothers and sisters, today's liturgy of the word tells us to be really transformed, to live in peace, to be slaves, to be humble, to be converted. We are invited for total renewal. May our participation in this holy Eucharistic celebration really do something to our lives personally and to our families and to the society at large. Amen.